A state diagram is a type of diagram used in computer science and related fields to describe the behavior of systems. State diagrams require that the system described is composed of a finite number of states. Sometimes, this is indeed the case, while at other times this is a reasonable abstraction. Many forms of state diagrams exist, which differ slightly and have different semantics. Overview State diagrams are used to give an abstract description of the behavior of a system. This behavior is analyzed and represented as a series of events that can occur in one or more possible states. Hereby each diagram usually represents objects of a single class and track the different states of its objects through the system. State diagrams can be used to graphically represent finite state machines. This was introduced by C. E. Shannon and W. Weaver in their 1949 book The Mathematical Theory of Communication. Another source is Taylor Booth in his 1967 book Sequential Machines and Automata Theory. Another possible representation is the state transition table. Directed graph. A classic form of state diagram for a finite state machine or finite automaton is a directed graph with the following elements, vertices Q, a finite set of states, normally represented by circles and labeled with unique designator symbols or words written inside them, input symbols I pound a finite collection of input symbols or designators, output symbol Z, a finite collection of output symbols or designators, the output function I perma represents the mapping of ordered pairs of input symbols and states onto output symbols, denoted mathematically as I perma I pounda, QAZ, edges I, represent transitions. From one state to another is caused by the input. An edge is usually drawn as an arrow directed from the present state to the next state. This mapping describes the state transition that is to occur on input of a particular symbol. This is written mathematically as IQA, I pound a Q, so by I in the definition of the FA is given both the pair of vertices connected by an edge and a symbol on an edge in a diagram representing this FA. I to my, Q, A, equals P in the definition of the FA means that from the state named Q under input symbol A, the transition to the state P occurs in this machine. In the diagram representing this FA, this is represented by an edge labeled by a pointing from the vertex labeled by Q to the vertex labeled by P. Start state QO. The start state QO or Q is usually represented by an arrow with no origin pointing to the state. In older texts, the start state is not shown and must be inferred from the text. Accepting state, S, F, if used, for example for accepting automata, F or Q is the accepting state. It is usually drawn as a double circle. Sometimes the accept state, S, function as final states. For a deterministic finite automaton, non-deterministic finite automaton, generalized non-deterministic finite automaton, or more machine, the inputs is denoted on each edge. For a mealy machine, input and output are signified on each edge. Separated with a slash slash one slash zero denotes the state change upon encountering the symbol one causing the symbol zero to be output. For a more machine the state's output is usually written inside the state circle, also separated from the state's designator with a slash slash. There are also variants that combine these two notations. For example, if a state has a number of outputs the diagram should reflect this, for example Q5 slash one. 0 designates state Q5 with outputs A equals 1, B equals 0. This designator will be written inside the state circle. Equals example, DFA, NFA, GNFA, or more machine equals, S1 and S2 are states and S1 is an accepting state or a final state. Each edge is labeled with the input. This example shows an acceptor for strings over 0, one that contain an even number of zeros. Equals example, mealy machine equals, SO, S1, and S2 are states. Each edge is labeled with J slash K, where J is the input and K is the output. Harrelstadt to chart, Harrelstadt to charts are gaining widespread usage since a variant has become part of the unified modeling language. The diagram type allows the modeling of superstates, orthogonal regions, and activities as part of a state. 
classic state diagrams require the creation of distinct nodes for every valid combination of parameters that define the state. This can lead to a very large number of nodes and transitions between nodes for all but the simplest of systems. This complexity reduces the readability of the state diagram. With Harold Stata charts it is possible to model multiple cross-functional state diagrams within the Stata chart. Each of these cross-functional state machines can transition internally without affecting the other state machines in the Stata chart. The current state of each cross-functional state machine in the Stata chart defines the state of the system. The Harold Stata chart is equivalent to a state diagram but it improves the readability of the resulting diagram. Alternative semantics there are other sets of semantics available to represent state diagrams. For example, there are tools for modeling and designing logic for embedded controllers. These diagrams, like Harold's original state machines, support hierarchically nested states, orthogonal regions, state actions, and transition actions. State diagrams versus flow charts, newcomers to the state machine formalism often confuse state diagrams with flow charts. The figure below shows a comparison of a state diagram with a flow chart. A state machine performs actions in response to explicit events. In contrast, the flow chart does not need explicit events but rather transitions from node to node in its graph automatically upon completion of activities. Nodes of flow charts are edges in the induced graph of states. The reason is that each node in a flow chart represents a program command. A program command is an action to be executed. So it is not a state, but when applied to the program state, it results in a transition to another state. In more detail, the source code listing represents a program graph. Executing the program graph results in a state graph. So each program graph induces a state graph. Conversion of the program graph to its associated state graph is called unfolding of the program graph. The program graph is a sequence of commands. If no variables exist, then the state consists only of the program counter, which keeps track of where in the program we are during execution. In this case before executing a command the program counter is at some position. Executing the command moves the program counter to the next command. Since the program counter is the whole state, it follows that executing the command changed the state. So the command itself corresponds to a transition between the two states. Now consider the full case, when variables exist and are affected by the program commands being executed. Then between different program counter locations, not only does the program counter change, but variables might also change values, due to the commands executed. Consequently even if we revisit some program command, this doesn't imply the program is in the same state. In the previous case, the program would be in the same state, because the whole state is just the program counter, so if the program counter points to the same position it suffices to specify that we are in the same state. However, if the state comprises also of variables, then if those change value, we can be at the same program location with different variable values, meaning in a different state in the program state space. The term unfolding originates from this multiplication of locations when producing the state graph from the program graph. A representative example is a do loop incrementing some counter until it overflows and becomes zero again. Although the do loop executes the same increment command iteratively, so the program graph executes a cycle, in its state space is not a cycle, but a line. This results from the state being the program location combined with the counter value which is strictly increasing, so different states are visited in sequence, until the overflow. After the overflow the counter becomes zero again, so the initial state is revisited in the state space, closing a cycle in the state space. A figure above attempts to show that reversal of roles by aligning the arcs of the state diagrams with the processing stages of the flow chart. You can compare a flow chart to an assembly line in manufacturing because the flow chart describes the progression of some task from beginning to end. A state machine generally has no notion of such a progression. The door state machine shown at the top of this article, for example, is not in a more advanced stage when it is in the closed state, compared to being in the open state. 
it simply reacts differently to the open-close events. A state-in-a-state -state machine is an efficient way of specifying a particular behavior, rather than a stage of processing. Other extensions, an interesting extension is to allow arcs to flow from any number of states to any number of states. This only makes sense if the system is allowed to be in multiple states at once, which implies that an individual state only describes a condition or other partial aspect of the overall, global state. The resulting formalism is known as a Petri net. Another extension allows the integration of flow charts within Herrlstadt to charts. This extension supports the development of software that is both event-driven and workflow-driven. See also, David Harrell, Dragon, SCXML and XML language that provides a generic state machine-based execution environment based on Harrell Stata charts. UML State Machine References External links Introduction to UML2 State Machine Diagrams by Scott W. Ambler UML2 State Machine Diagram Guidelines by Scott W. Ambler, IntelliWizard, UML State Wizard, a class wizard-like round-trip UML dynamic modeling development framework and tool running in popular IDEs under open source license. Yak Hindu Stata Chart Tools, an open source tool for the specification and development of reactive, event-driven systems with the help of state machines. Understanding and Using State Machines MATLAB Tech Talks on State Machines, FSM, Open Source Finite State Machine Generation in Java by Alexander Sakharov FSM, SMC, an open source state machine compiler that generates FSM for many languages as C, Python, Lua, Scala, PHP, Java, VB, etc. SMC.